Concrete's here. We're ready to roll. So we're pumping today. Got a pool there. Go show you real quick. Pretty easy one, as far as, as far as my thoughts are. 800 square feet. Just access is a little tricky. That's why we got to get a pump. But all broom finished today. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. If you're a new watcher to my channel here, please consider subscribing. If if you're a regular, then thanks for coming back and watching more of my videos. Today we got a pool deck. There's a lot of detail that goes on around a pool deck, so this should be pretty interesting. First detail is the forming system. We're using two different types of forms here. Around the pool, the, co the coping around the pool with the red liner you see there is Z pool forms. You can check them out at uh, concrete countertop solutions or Z pool forms if you if you Google both of those that's a really nice forming system for around the inside of pools and doing the coping like that it's we found it's the best one we use a lot of them it's quick it's easy and those forms you can use over and over again and you can put multiple different types of liners in there to get multiple different textures this is the most popular we we use is like a kind of like a slight stone texture in there with this red one and then for the outside, the black forms we're using, those are polymetaforms. You can Google those and look them up. Uh, they have the rigid straight ones, and then they also have curved ones you can use if you want. So check them out too. Those are really nice forms. Now we're going to be hand tooling joints in this, and then we'll put a broom finish on it. That's a pretty typical pool deck finish up here in Maine. You know, we'll do a few stamp concrete ones. But the, the, the medium to light broom finish is what we do a lot. And that, that's what I have around my pool, actually. My pool is probably almost 20 years old. And it offers really good slip resistance. It, I honestly think it's the best finish for around pools up here. If you got little kids that are kind of running around, they're not going to slip on a broom finish, if it, even if it gets wet, for most, you know, in most cases, versus a stamp finish. You know that can be kind of smooth and then after you put the sealer on it that can be even more slippery so i don't really recommend stamp concrete finishes around pools if you got small kids i just i like the broom finishes and the good thing about just using like this is a 4000 psi concrete uh it's got a three quarter stone three eight stone in it. it's kind of a blend of stone but the good thing about just using 4000 psi concrete you can see when you when you pour it out like this it looks gray um, but after it cures, you know, after after about 30 days, it really lightens up. Almost, it, I mean, it's not white, but it's it's a really really light gray. So it doesn't necessarily uh, collect heat in the sun. You can still walk on it with bare feet in the summer without the concrete being too hot, in my opinion. Versus stamp concrete, when you add color to concrete, you know, people want to darken it and they want to make it look either dark gray or some other dark color. That gets so hot in the sun, you can't even walk on it with bare feet. So I try to talk people out of that if I can. You can see what I'm doing is we usually vibrate. We use our DeWalt pencil vibrator around the inside of those forms, being really careful. They do go in there, real, they're friction fit. They go in there really, really snug. But you still want to be careful up against them. So we vibrate them, and then we'll tap them as we mag the edges just to see if there's any more little air bubbles that might come out. So we kind of give it a double vibration and we found that works best and then when you strip those forms off and you take those liners off you have very very few little air pockets in there at all if you you know if you really take your time putting the concrete in now when we pour pools like when you pour up against a house like this we we do taper the concrete away from the pool because we don't want any rain water running back into the pool and kind of over flooding the pool so the concrete tapers away and in this case, we put, even though you can't see them right this minute, but up against each one of those doors, there's a, a little thin trench drain. It's about an inch and a half wide, and four inches deep. So we made, it sh we made it so the water would run to those trench drains and then drain out the edges of the pool. So water won't pool up against the house. And that's what we found works best up against these houses. You can get those little trench drains most most big box stores have them if not you can just you know google uh pool trench drains online and you know they'll probably pop up you can take a look at what they look like just in case you need something like that but what's going to make this this pour a little trickier than others is having the concrete 
right up against the house like that in between the pool is is when we go to finish the concrete and you'll see that here coming up a little bit later in the video but when you go to broom the concrete you go to cut your hand joints in there it just makes it a little trickier and you're going to get to see like how we tackle that versus maybe how some other people tackle that you can see luke's luke's now vibrating that being really careful not to get too close but just enough to vibrate the concrete and consolidate it around the inside of the z pool forms and then we're tapping both the inside and the outside forms, the polymeta forms, to make sure when we strip those outside ones off, the edges look nice and smooth too. The homeowner here did, he did all the, like the grading around this. He did all that rock work by hand. Uh, there was a ton of grading to do around the pool. The pool guys did most of the backfilling, but he finished it off all by himself. He, he did a pretty good job actually the concrete's pretty much four to five inches everywhere which is pretty good thickness for around a pool you know with the wire mesh in there and the 4000 psi concrete and then we got microfiber mesh in the concrete also for reinforcement we got water reducer in the concrete to help us pour you know a little bit looser slump than normal without hurting the strength of the concrete Luke's using a little uh, handmade walk behind screeder there to do the thin part of the pool. And then, again, that slopes away. That slopes away about three quarters of an inch from the pool from one side to the other. And what makes using the, this, these two forming systems really nice is obviously the inside one, the top of the form is always the grade. That's just the way it goes with those inside Z pool forms. But the outside ones, the way the the way the pins go in with the clamps they have is you can set those pins below grade at grade or below grade so when you can you can screed right off top of the forms like this and not have to worry about going around your metal pins or wooden pins whatever you end up using and see how easy that makes it screeding for loop so basically one guy can do the screed and one guy do the raking behind him and the other guys can just keep pouring if they need to to keep the whole pool deck moving and we're being a little careful around that skimmer. We don't want to get any concrete in the skimmer. Those things, they're just, the skimmers are just kind of set. You know, that top piece there is just set inside another piece. And it can, you can move that up and down a little bit. We like, we like getting it right about to grade. So as Luke screeds over it, it's right flush with the top of the concrete. And in most cases that works. Some cases we gotta get an extension to put in there and so that we can raise that skimmer up depending on how the guys install the pool. So we're just working around their installation. Usually they'll provide us with the extension if we need it. It's like a two to three inch extension that you can set down inside there and then put that top back on there. Just lifts the top back up to get it closer to grade. I don't like that top being you know way two to three inches below grade so everything dips down towards it there is like I said there's a lot of little detail to this you know there's five of us here and we're all keeping quite busy doing something I'm pulling wire as Darren's pumping out the concrete there's usually a guy raking the concrete level behind him that's the guy in the gray shirt that's Joe um, you can see Harvey's in the black sweatshirt. He's kind of vibrating the edges. Luke's magging the edges and doing the screeding. And we wanted to, we stopped the concrete right there. We didn't want to get too much concrete in there and have to shovel any out in case we're a little bit high. You can see how I'm coming back in now and kind of relifting the wire a little bit after everybody walks on it. When you lift that wire up into the concrete, the, the stones, the aggregate in the concrete gets underneath the wire. And they help hold that wire up off the bottom of the conk off the dirt really after you even after you walk on it because i've done other videos about it and uh so even walking back in there after pulling the wire up doesn't push the wire all the way back down to the dirt it still holds up into the concrete there a little bit that's why we use both wire and fiber mesh in pool deck sometimes even sometimes we'll put a matter rebar in there Right now what I'm doing is I'm putting some small pieces of rebar around the four corners of that skimmer because it always tends to want to shrink and crack around those corners. You'll see how we kind of attack that a little bit later on when, when we go to cut our joints, but that will, if it does want to crack around those corners a little funny, those little pieces of rebar will help hold that crack together really tight. 
again tapping out the tapping out the forms make sure there's no little air bubbles in there get my footprints magged out and Luke's finishing up screeding so we're gonna get right to the finishing here in a second bit better shot of the end it's a little cloudy out right now so we don't worry about the sun beating on it too bad <laughs> ah, I wonder if some of you guys notice those funny looking plants that <laughs> went by. Some people here in Maine, they can, they can uh, grow their own plants for medical reasons. So that's why, that's why they're there if you're kind of wondering why. <laughs> so I'm going to go back and bull float. Uh, Darren's just going to finish up this little piece and we're going to get to the finishing part of the pool. But if you want to, you know, if you're interested in learning how to work with concrete like we do, you can join the Concrete Underground. That's my training center. I got a link for that down if you look where it says show more under the video click on show more and the description of the video comes up so I've got a link in there for that or you can go to my website everythingaboutconcrete.com and click on the training video section and you can join up that way and that's where all my training videos are for all the types of finishing not just pool decks and you know hand joining and broom finishing but all different types of concrete finishes we do in there I'm just trying to help as many people that want to learn how to work with concrete as I possibly as I can. And I add videos, I add more training videos to that, you know, every once in a while. But there's quite a few in there already. See, I'm slowly bowl floating that, making sure nothing's going to sag, trying to get it as smooth as possible before we finish, just to help make the finishing process go a little easier. The better you bow float, the easier finishing will be. So you want to take your time with that. You want to settle down the aggregate right at the surface. Bring up a little bit of cream and paste like I'm doing right now. Just make your finishing a little bit easier. Now we're being really careful not to get too much concrete outside so we don't make a mess. And have to clean that up a little bit later. And we also have a little pad on the other side of this garage we're doing for the homeowner. So any little extra concrete we got, we want to be able to put in that pad and finish that little pad up for him. After I bull float, you can see I'm coming back with the mag float, just making sure I'm smoothing anything out. I don't want to keep going over it and over it with the bull float because it might sag away from the... The inside forms a little bit and leave a little bit of a low spot up against those Z pool forms. You can see how Harvey stays a few inches away, not so as not to create a divot right at the form. That makes it a little harder to finish later on. All right, so here we are cutting joints, and we're using a couple different tools to cut joints with. This is what we call it, like a torpedo groover. This is for your early joint cutting. Get your joints cut in you know real early uh, before the concrete starts setting up too much and that stuff I'm spraying on there that's kind of this that's kind of a one of our our secret secret finishing aids that go over that in the concrete underground if you want to learn about what that is helps make finishing a little bit easier but we're getting our joints kind of pre-cut while the concrete's really soft and we like cutting a lot of joints around pools this tends to be, you know, because it, it's so thin and long, you know, narrow and long, four feet wide, you know, 50 feet long. Concrete does want to shrink a lot, 50 lineal feet. So you want to make sure you cut plenty of joints. That's how we handle the skimmers right there. That's the best way we found to handle cracks around the skimmers is to, just to cut two joints right off, you know, all those outside corners. And 99% of the time, that'll it'll crack right in those joints and not kind of diagonally off the skimmer. So Joe's using the little walk-behind groover now with the handles. 
getting all the joints cut in on the narrow section. It's the, it's the section up against the house that's going to be a little trickier cutting joints. We actually have to get out on the concrete because we can't reach it any other way. So that's going to be the little tricky part. And that's where experience comes in, you know, having done it many other times before on different types of projects. Just staying ahead of the game now, getting the edges magged. We got them, you know, somebody went around the, the poly metaforms with the edger and got the edges all edged. And here's how we're cutting the joints up by the house. So we're getting on our skids. I call them skids, those things that slide up across the top of the concrete. Some guys call them sliders. I don't know. What do you guys call them? We've always called them skids. And we're taking just our regular hand screed, our magnesium straight edge or rod or whatever you guys want to call it. I call it a screed. And we're using that as a guide just with a hand joiner, typical hand joiner. And the concrete's a little firmer here, so you've got to be able to have to put a little pressure down on it to move the aggregate away and cut the joint. We've had, I got that pre-marked out so I know exactly where to set it, depending on where we want the joints. And I can get them cut right in there by hand before the concrete gets too hard. That makes it a little trickier, you know. You just got, timing is everything. That's why it's nice to have plenty of finishers around when you're doing a pool deck like this. A lot of stuff going on at all at the same time. Concrete setting up pretty good up against the house getting really close to brooming time and brooming you know because we want we want the broom marks to go pretty much the same way as the water is going to run so from the pool towards the house from the pool away from the pool so the broom marks we want them to run a certain way which makes brooming this a little trickier and you know the corners are always like up for debate which way to broom these corners, kind of like where Harvey is right now on that curved corner there to the left. So we're gonna broom that kind of north and south as far as how you're looking at the video, And the, but where me and Luke are, that's gonna get broomed east to west. And you know, the easiest way to broom that really is to be able to run the broom without stopping it from one end to the other. So we hooked up all our handles and we're gonna just mag out a little section, let Darren broom it, then that one guy's gonna pick it up, mag out his skid marks, broom it, pick it up, mag out his skid marks. So that's how we kind of attack the inside as well as cutting the joints. And we decided, we decided on this one not to leave like the finished tool mark on the joints, just to leave it looking kind of all consistent with the joints. But you'll see at the end that we did end up leaving the, that would be kind of like what they call a picture frame finish. We didn't really want your eyes to be pulled away from the, the whole pool deck by looking at just the joint. But we did leave the finish edge mark, which we typically do on anything broom finish. That's how we had to handle the broom in there up against the house. So that's another reason why it's nice to have plenty of guys so if you only got two guys trying to finish this you know you're gonna be i think you're gonna end, end up being out of luck as far as getting around the whole pool especially you now you can see the sun starting to pop out once this starts once this is ready to finish i mean you only have a short amount of time to get from one end to the other before it gets too hard so you want to be able to get all the finishing done around a pool like this. This is 800 square feet, probably in 30-ish minutes or so, 30, 45 minutes before it gets too hard at the other end. I'm jumping back, grabbing my skids, getting on this section right here. So we, we're the ones that set the little ladder in back. We make sure that's set properly and usually we'll just do it the way we did there with a ladder right in it to make sure it's all good and plumb and up against the pool and then right here where the stairs are where i'm getting on with the skids we set a couple couplings in there for the railing and later on they can just you know insert the railing into those couplings tighten it up and then they'll have a railing to grab onto as you come up the stairs i personally in my pool i don't have a railing never had a use for it didn't care for it 
Um, and so it's kind of like 50-50 if you really need a railing or not coming up out of those stairs. And we're not using steel trowels. You can see we're just mag floating this. It's pretty tight after we mag float it, pretty smooth. No real need to go over it with a steel trowel afterwards. Our concrete up here, our exterior concrete has air entrainment in it. I'm just cleaning up that joint right now with the hand groover, as you can see, cleaning it after we mag float it, getting it nice and clean and smooth looking before we broom it. But our concrete has air entrainment in it. Even though we're brooming it and kind of open the surface back up, we don't like taking a chance on putting steel on it, something really smooth, and maybe trapping some air under there because air is escaping out of the surface as well as moisture. Both are right now. Moisture is evaporating out of the surface. We don't want to trap moisture in there, cause a blister or a bubble, you know, that we can't see down the road that could pop and you know that air has something to do with that you guys that live in sections of the country where you don't get freeze and thaw like us you don't really have to deal with air entrainment like we do but because we deal with air entrainment all the time we, we you know we're careful we'll mag float something out twice before we'll put steel on it get it really smooth really tight that's a pretty typical pool finish right there for us well, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. What do you think this came out like? We do a lot of these pools every year. This is a pretty average size pool deck, 800 square feet. It's about an average size pool deck. Uh, let me know what you if you like that forming system. You know, we'll come back the next day and strip the forms off. They pull off fairly easily for the most part and leave a really nice finish. But leave me a comment. Let me know at least where you're from. If you're watching the video, if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Again, hit the subscriber button. Put out a couple videos a week all about concrete stuff. If you're a returning visitor, thanks. You know, drop me your name down there. Let me know who you are. If you like my videos, we'll see you on the next one.